Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to install the animation nodes. My name is Frederik Steinmetz for BlenderDiplom.com and before you can install the nodes you of course need to download them if you haven't done so already. This is the GitHub page of Jacques Lucke. He's the author of the animation nodes. The link will be provided below this video or you can also see it up here. It's github.com slash Jacques Lucke and you can see he has a couple of add-ons already. The animation nodes are by far the most famous. So let's just click on those, ignore the rest and afterwards you can download the zip file. If you click on here download zip, do not extract it, save it somewhere on your computer and then go back to Blender. Back inside Blender go to file, user preferences. You can also hit Control alt u for that. In the user preferences, if you are not already on this tab, click on add-ons and then click on install from file. Then locate the zip file that you downloaded and double click on it and the animation nodes will appear under node. And you can see here the animation nodes are here but they're not active. So you need to activate them after installing them by checking this little box. This actually takes a little while because there's so much stuff going on with the animation node. It's registering an entire new system, but you only need to wait for that once. You can see I have another node add-on enabled, the Node Wrangler, which ships with Blender. It's very cool. And in the past, it used to interfere a bit with the animation nodes. I don't think it does anymore, but just in case you run into weird problems, try disabling the Node Wrangler. All right, we can close those settings now and I'm going to hit control and left arrow which does the same thing as going to compositing here. If you don't have the animation node activated you won't see this and you won't see the templates. So let's click on this because this is the tree for the animation node. So before you can do anything we have to choose a new node tree and by default it's empty because there's almost infinite possibility what you can do with it and there's no point in guessing what you want to do. I'm, I pressed T which opens up the toolbar menu, tool shelf menu and let's have a look at the options. But before we can utilize any of the options we should create a tiny and simple node tree. I'm going to zoom out here and move this to the side so I can see the cube traveling along the x-axis which is what I'm trying to build with nodes. If you press shift A you can choose under object transforms output. If I press the eyedropper here the active object in the viewport will get selected and in order to do anything with this I'm going to check the three locations. Okay so now we can move the cube using this node. But of course that would be much easier moving the cube with the uh, slider using the widget or the G key. So let's make this a bit more interesting. If I press Shift A again, animation time info, I get the current frame, which is one at the moment. Now if we connect this here, it automatically creates a combined vector because you can plug a float, which is a decimal number, into a vector. So right now, the frame is affecting the X location of our cube. Y and Z will remain untouched. Okay, so if I scrub through the timeline now, you can see the cube moving, which is exactly what I want. And you can also see, if I grab the cube, I can't move it. This is because the location of the cube is entirely controlled by the node system. If I uncheck the Y value, I can move it along the Y axis. Now the cube is not being created by the animation nodes and it's also not being held in place by the animation node. As often as it can, it will put the cube back to where the node says because the update is on always. You can see every 0.01 millisecond this node tree is executed which means I cannot see the cube moving because it immediately is placed where the animation nodes tell it to be placed. Okay, so let's just uncheck always and now I can move the cube. So right now it's supposed to be at the position of 1. Let's get another 3D view here. But it's at 26. So at some point the animation nodes of course need to update again. 
otherwise you can't see what you're doing. But still I don't like to keep them on always because it's always computing. And that means once your node tree gets a little bigger, that's a lot of stuff your computer has to do in the background. So I usually use those three. Let's go over them one by one. The easiest is probably frame change, so let's start with that one. If I change the frame, the node tree will get executed and the cube will jump to the location that our node is dictating. So if I press the right arrow, you can see the frame is changing. It's changing to 7, 8 and so on. And now it's a 12. The location is a 12 as well. So changing the frame in any way, meaning pressing the arrows, pressing Alt A or scrubbing through the timeline, all updates the tree and the cube gets moved again. The next thing would be property changed, for example. Properties are all the fields that you have here. Let's move the cube to some place again so we can see if something happens. Checking one of these doesn't change anything, so it's not being considered as a property change. But if I increase this value, you can see the tree gets executed. So every time you change a numeric value in your node tree, the tree gets executed, which is something I find pretty neat because, for example, if you insert a node that isn't connected yet, the tree doesn't need to be updated. Only when you actually change a value, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So the last thing is tree changed. Now this might be considered changing the tree because it's changing a value inside the tree, but it doesn't really change the tree. Now, actually changing the tree would be inserting a new node. Let's push this aside so we can see something's happening. Let's just use a number math node and you can see it gets executed. And also if I create a new link, it also gets executed. Which means when I change the tree, when I add a leaf or a branch or anything else, the tree change will trigger and the node tree will be executed. So those three actually make a lot of sense to me. So I usually just use these three instead of always. You can choose a min time difference. I'm going to press Alt A and now the animation is doing its thing continuously. Let's, uh, okay, so the cube is moving. If I change the minimum time difference, you can see the movement gets more choppy. And like this, for example, it's only executed twice per second. While this may make the animation look pretty choppy, it can still be very convenient because if you have a node tree that's being executed all the time, there is no room for your processor to breathe so you can insert new nodes or change values. So I would usually use the minimum time difference in combination with the always, but you can of course combine it with the other three. It hasn't happened often to me recently anymore, but it still can happen that your node tree freezes. This can also happen if you open your file for the first time after you close Blender, then you, the node tree can be sort of stuck. If that happens, go to Windows, System Console, and then, and if there's no bug or anything, no error report going on, just press play to execute the node tree, which will kind of restart everything. It's there for safety measures, just in case everything freezes. Okay, two more things. One is the edit node labels, which will display a field for every node. I can then label the nodes and you can see whatever I put in here will be put into the title here, or the overhead of the node. You can do the same thing by clicking on the node and typing in the label over here. It's the same thing, but it's as a bit more it's a bit easier to overview. If you know you want to make a lot of changes, you can just check the edit node labels. And as a final thing, I think it's good practice to keep everything in one node tree. You can see that you can have several trees. If I click on the two here, it will be duplicated. You can influence your objects and that might be an advantage, but I'd recommend you to use one tree and then use the frame option to separate your 
nodes from each other. For example, if I press B and then draw a box around the nodes, I can then press Ctrl J to put them into a frame and thereby I can group the nodes, whatever is influencing this object and that object or this loop and that loop. I can group them. I can then choose the label of the frame, call it my group and important the label size can be altered as well. Okay, so if you move the frame, all the nodes inside of it will come with it. And if you press Alt P, now you can see the node gets taken out of the frame. So that was a bit of a side note. But now you should be able to install the animation nodes and get started with So have fun testing. My name is Frederik Steinmetz. And please do try this at home.